What is going to happen to Texas if Donald Trump or Kamala Harris is elected in November? Hey everyone, welcome back to My Favorite CPA. My name is CPA Dan Hodges and I am a 30 year veteran business CPA. Today we're driving into a hot topic and it honestly affects all of us. There are going to potentially be sweeping tax law changes under the next presidential administration. All indicators are it's either going to be Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. With the election right around the corner, it's really important that we pay attention and dig a little bit deeper into what their tax policy might be. So let's break it down. First, let's take a look at our current landscape. As it stands, the federal tax system is progressive. And what does that mean? That means that the more you make, the more they take. In other words, as your income increases, you pay a higher percentage in taxes. Today, we have seven tax brackets, and they range from 10% to 37%. But how would this change if Harris or Trump is elected? Let's find out. As a senator, Harris has proposed several tax reforms that could significantly impact American taxpayers. Number one, we have an increase in corporate tax rates. Harris aims to raise the corporate taxes from 21%, the current rate, to 28%. This would principally affect large corporations, and I guess the hope is that it would lead to expanded and enhanced revenue for social programs. Number two, we have the wealth tax. Harris supports a new wealth tax on individuals when their net worth exceeds $50 million. The theory is that they would charge an additional 1% wealth tax on anyone above that threshold, aiming to address income inequality. Critics have called the emphasis on taxing the rich Robin Hood economics. In other words, taking from the rich and giving to the poor. Number three, the expanded child tax credit. Harris has proposed expanding the child tax credit up to $3,600 per child. This would help families with young children. I think we can all agree on that. Number four, investment in green energy. Harris's plan includes extensive tax incentives for green energy and green energy investments, which could shift the focus of tax breaks towards sustainable practices. So what would these changes mean for you? For high income earners and wealthy individuals, this could clearly mean paying significantly more taxes. Families definitely could benefit from the expanded child tax credits, and it would definitely provide financial relief in today's economy. If you're working for a large corporation, Expanded corporate tax rates could definitely affect corporate decisions and corporate politics and employment and a number of other things. In other words, they would need to manage their costs. Now let's turn our attention to Donald Trump. During his presidency, he early implemented the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that brought significant changes to the tax code. If elected again, we can be pretty sure that he is going to prioritize further cutting of taxes and the extending of the act. So let's look at some possible proposals from Trump. Number one, we have permanent tax cuts. Trump would aim to make the tax cuts from the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act permanent. And what that would do is keep lower tax rates for everybody for the long term. Number two, reduction of corporate tax rates. Trump has indicated a desire to lower the corporate tax rate even further, potentially below the current rate of 21%. Number three, we have tax incentives for business. Trump's plan would probably include more tax breaks and more incentives for businesses of all sizes to stimulate the economy and to help with job growth. Number four, increased standard deduction. Trump has proposed further increasing the standard deduction, which could definitely simplify taxes for so many Americans. So what would Trump's tax proposals mean for the average American? The potential permanent cuts 
could mean lowered tax bills for most individuals and families. Reduced corporate tax rates and business incentives may lead to job growth, but if the overall economy does not grow, it could mean less revenue for public services. While many would definitely benefit from the increased standard deduction, critics argue that the tax cuts disproportionately benefit the wealthy. Now that we've explored both candidates, let's compare them. In summary, we do have a different focus between the middle class and the wealthy. Harris takes aim at the wealthy with her wealth tax, whereas Trump focuses on broad tax cuts for everybody, which he argues would benefit the middle class. Harris's primary objective is to generate revenue for social programs, whereas Trump's approach leans towards reducing taxes in an effort to spur the economy. So as voters, what should you consider in evaluating these different proposals? Well, first, think about your personal financial situation. Think about how each candidate's proposals would affect your own taxes. Whether you're a high income earner, a family with kids, or a small business owner. Next, think about the long-term effects. Consider the long-term implications of each different approach. How will these changes affect the economy, job growth, and public services. Finally, think about values versus priorities. Reflect on what's important to you. Do you prioritize wealth distribution or do you favor business growth for both large businesses, medium and small? Or do you prefer a more balanced approach? This pretty much wraps up our breakdown of potential tax changes under both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. No matter who you support, for other reasons, it's really important that you focus in on the tax policy of each candidate. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. That way you can get updates and tax news you can use. Let us know in the comments what you think about these differing proposals and how they can impact you and your friends and your family. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.